I know this is not an AA meeting, nor is it an all shares meeting, but it's one member's view on the exact nature of the wrong as it's described on page 64 of the AA Big Book. And uh, what we usually do is we usually open up with a small reading from the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. We'll open it up for Paul to share on the reading, and then we open it up for questions um, that anybody may have on the 12 steps with uh, for Paul. Well, and um, there's plenty of time, so get your questions ready. Today, Paul, we're going to go to the very beginning of the book. We're going to go to the forward to the first edition, Roman numeral 13. Yep. Okay, it says, this is the forward as it appeared in the first printing of the first edition in 1939. We, of Alcoholics Anonymous, are more than 100 men and women who have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. To show other alcoholics precisely how we have recovered is the main purpose of this book. For them, we hope these pages will prove so convincing that no further authentication will be necessary. We think this account of our experiences will be help, will, will help everyone to better understand the alcoholic. Many do not comprehend the alcoholic is a very sick person. And besides, we are sure that our way of living has its advantages to all. That's all, Paul. Hope you can find something okay. out of there to, to rip on. Boy, there's a lot there, yes. So a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. How welcome everyone. Nice to see you. I think one of the definitions of seemingly is it's appearing to be true or false to us. Yeah. So basically the hopelessness of this condition is based on our condition. Yeah. And it, in reality, it can only seemingly be hopeless. In other words, it can appear to be true to us that it's hopeless, but it's not really hopeless because many people have recovered, yes? So the seemingly really is a pretty important word because a lot of times during the day, false evidence is appearing real to us, so something false seems to be real. Yeah, so thoughts about someone's conniving to set you up for a fall. The person hasn't thought about you in weeks. Yeah, so this kind of stuff uh, is at a level of seemingly so. And then if there's a belief in it and a decision's made based on self, it sets off circumstances that may bring us misfortune. We feel we won't deserve or don't deserve. And then obviously we look at who we can blame or start having a, a, a large grievance to the point where the grievance is more important than any relief from the grievance. Yeah. It's almost sacrosanct that we've been fucked over. So this whole word of seemingly so here, we were a hundred men and women who have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body before they recovered. It was a hopeless state of mind and body. Yeah. But its nature is that it's a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body, or it can be a seemingly hopeful state of mind and body. Yeah, it based, it's based on how we look at it. So this is the beautiful thing of willingness, just a tiny little bit of willingness. And I remember, you know, March, uh, my first AA meeting, it was a men's meeting. I had been dropped off at the Salvation Army with a promise that the person who dropped me off was going to pick me up at nine. And when I sat in that room, uh, I felt a little hope and it allowed me to feel how hopeless I was. It was a trip, eh? Without hope, there was just a denial of the hopelessness. Yeah, because the hopelessness was the reality. And I didn't want that to be real. So I did everything I could to avoid it, distract myself from it. Yes. So the act of denial can take a lot of different expressions, but it's a pretty strong muscle in most of us. Yeah. So that act of denial, I felt a little hope. And so it went down and I really felt the hopelessness of the condition, which led to support what had happened 
that day. Yeah. And then luckily I went back to AA the next day at noon and there it went. You know, I got, I caught that wave or the wave caught me. And then I just wrote it. And by the time I actually uh, came to my senses, I was in the habit of being sober, really. <laughs> the, the change had occurred really with, without me knowing it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so a hundred men and women who have seemingly recovered from a, a hopeless state of mind and body. When of course it would, it could have said a hopeless state of body and mind, but mind precedes the body. Yes. So like they say, if you get in fit spiritual condition, the, the mind and the body will follow. So this is basically uh, the hierarchy that explains the solution from the problem. Yeah. So something before certain conditions is what's going to change the conditions that come after. Yeah. So it's going to be a spiritual solution. That's what AA offers. And now you can, I guess you want, if you want, you can make it up. No one has a clear definition of what spirit is or spiritual is. It can look a lot of different ways, but basically it's not a mental condition. That's the important thing. And the problem resides in the mental condition. So we need a solution, not from the system that produces the problem as Einstein said, and these other people. Yes, you can't go to the system that produces the problem to get a solution to it. It just doesn't work. So we're not going to get a mental solution. So a philosophy could be mental, but if it's lived, it becomes something else. Yeah. So hopefully we are 100 men and women who have recovered. So basically they're saying it's already done. Yeah. They didn't say we're in the process of recovering. They said we have recovered from this seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. And basically, the purpose of this book is to precisely one of them, uh, how we have recovered is the main purpose of the book. And basically, it's to introduce this idea of a spiritual solution yeah now they go into the term god and a lot of people have a lot of opinions about that that can divert divert you from the 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 real situation at hand is you're basically fucked and uh you don't really have a position to start you know pining away opining away and having a tons of opinions about shit you need to do something to hopefully change the condition i hope <laughs> i remember when i sat at the lancy street at that bench and i was in that terminal uniqueness condition and i looked i had nowhere to go i didn't have a pot to piss in and i look at the wall wall and there's a clock on it and it said six o'clock and i made a condition I said, well, I'm going to give these people to 630 to see me or I'm out of here. Like I had a lot of places to go. It was amazing. <laughs> if I don't like the room they offer, I'll not stay. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I want it to be facing north, not south. <laughs> these are insane, eh? So uh, to show all the alcoholics pre precisely how we have recovered is the main purpose of the book. For them, we know these pages will prove so convincing that no further authentication will be necessary. Well, uh, <laughs> that hasn't always panned out to be the truth. You would have hoped, yes, just like this message that we were trying to offer here about the exact nature of the wrong, I would have thought it would just, you know, become clear and obvious. And yet, <laughs> and it would be easy to have people convinced because they've been defeated by that which we're trying to describe. Yeah? Yeah. So we think the account of our experiences will help everyone to better understand the alcoholic. Many do not comprehend that the alcoholic is a very sick person. 
And besides, we are sure that one way, our way of living has an a, its advantage for all. So basically, yeah, it got it got uh, shoehorned into being only for alcoholics and addicts. But even in the addiction world, it spread over to 100 different topics, right? Gamblers Anonymous, Video Game Anonymous, tons of things. And it could really expand because it's a way of life, a design for living. It doesn't say a design for living only presented as an alcoholic or a drug addict. It's a design for living. Anyone who would follow it, it would probably bring about some advantages. Yeah, not bad, eh? So... Uh, there you go. Now, the beautiful thing is they have recovered, which is incredible, isn't it? Isn't it amazing? If you've had that monkey on your back and its little reins were around your neck and its bit was in your mouth, to be relieved of that, even for a little while, is awesome. Yeah? To have it be removed or to recover from it is, I mean, I would, I doubt a lot of what people call solutions, but that really is a, a living il uh, illustration of the word solution to me, that the problem does not exist for you. That's a damn good solution. Eh? Yeah. And I believe if you see it's not you, the possibility that it does not exist as you, it may exist through you, yes? And you may be at its effects, but there'll be a clear uh, recognition that, that that which is talking to you is not you. Because if you're listening to it with great devotion, fuck, yeah? Yeah. Wow. A lot of people's livelihood is based on you and I listening to it with great devotion. Counselors and therapists and everything else. Because basically, we live in a world that's actually not happening. Yeah, we're walking around thinking that everyone is thinking about us, and they're not. Yeah, not every person you pass by is out to get you. They've got other things on their mind. Yeah. But the self-centeredness is so myopic that you see everything as how it pertains to you. Yeah, but that you that's made up from that self-centered view is not you. It is actually that which has defeated us. Yeah, and we give it the name self in recovery. And hopefully, if you're interested and you get to step four through nine, which are the working steps, the first working step is the inventory. And the way I see the inventory is doing an inventory on the common manifestations of self in one's life to see how the manifestations was how self defeated us. Yeah. Now, what keeps us around to constantly keep getting defeated is the underlying problem, which is the act of being identified as self. Yeah. And they explain that in our community. One of the dilemmas of that act of being identified as self is you're going to see that self's been trying to get out of self and it can't do it. Yeah. And whatever it is, it could be a ladder, it could be a process, it could be recovery, but whatever it's involved with, it's going to run into this dilemma of misunderstanding. Self cannot get out of self. Wow. What an incredible, if you're climbing that mountain, it would be, that would have been a nice considerate thing for the previous mountain climber to put that there. Yeah. So that we don't fall on that fucking sword. So what do they mean by self can't get out of self? What I humbly believe they mean is there's this thing that has defeated us. And of course, there's a drive to get out of it yet we are taking ourselves to be it. So when we try to get out of self as self, you can't get out of self as self, yeah? So all your failures could be explained. It's gonna be very difficult to explain them if you keep seeing you, Paul, 
as that which is trying to get out of self. But when you see Paul, a.k.a. self, trying to get out of self, you'll get it, yeah? And maybe instead of trying to manage your process to escape this situation, you'll surrender to the condition that you find yourself in, yes? And humbly ask something to do for you what you can't do for yourself, which is not only get sober, but stay sober, yeah? And just get on with it. Just get those, you know, those first blocks in place and then life will add and subtract and you'll have your own event, but you'll have the soundness of the common basis of relief from the bondage of self. Yeah. And then go ahead and be as unique and individual as you want. Yeah. But you won't be thrown in jail every night, probably. And all these other unique very special person or ending up in the same place that everyone else who thinks they're very unique and special end up. Yeah. Institution, jails, and death. That doesn't that makes you not unique and individual. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm hoping if you're not sober, wow, there's a possibility. If you are sober, great. Yeah. And if you're in the habit of being sober, then a lot of the things that we're asked to do in AA, you're now living from that, yes? Yeah. You may not be doing service at this very second, but you'll be of service, yeah? You may not have every great thing happening so you, it triggers gratitude. You may be in an attitude of gratitude, yeah? So these things that we had a practice at one point have now become us. And we're in the habit of being sober and we're in the habit of being recovered from this seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Yeah. And what do you do? Step 12, the agenda. Yeah. Stay sober and help other people to get this, to get this gift of sobriety. Yeah. And if you can't practice these principles in all your affairs, limit your affairs for a while until you can. Yeah. If you can't do something now, let's say having a viable relationship with another person does not mean you're not going to be able to do that later. It just means you need to have a little more work done. Yeah. So just stay on the operating table. Don't get up and don't play doctor. And a lot of things like we say, trust the process and don't leave before the miracle. Yeah. So there you have it. Now, if you agree or don't agree, the steps are val still valid and they're still available. I just saw a great, great possibility of being relieved from it when I saw I wasn't it. Yeah. And that something had taken me over and how it kept taking me over. It had me duped believing what it was telling me I was telling me. Yeah. So a lot of false evidence was appearing real and decisions were made on self. And I was continu continually trying to manage the misfortune these decisions brought about. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, you want to open it up, Mike? Sure. Welcome, everybody. And uh, if you have any questions for Paul on the reading, the 12 steps in general, or... Um, the manifestations of self in your life, please use the raise hand feature. And, um, you know, you know, Paul, it, when you said that thing about like the monkey on your back, you know, um, I had an experience this past Sunday. I was, uh, I was heading to a meeting to meet somebody in, in, in Fresno and I was running a little bit late. And so I was speeding to Fresno from my house and, um, you know, lo and behold, there's, uh, you know, uh, up around the bend behind a, a, a big rig was this guy holding a, on a motorcycle, holding one of those radar guns, you know, and that feeling, that feeling that drenched over me, you know, and then yeah. as I passed him, uh, I, I didn't realize how bad that feeling of having to look over your shoulder has been gone from its absence because it suddenly returned. And when you yeah. said that about monkey on my back is like wow you know i mean if that for me just personally if that for me isn't you know like a way to stay within the baby bug buggy bumpers of life 
then. <laughs> that was that was really strong. And and you know, knock on wood, I, I, I don't live like that so much anymore. But yeah, for that brief moment, it it was on, you know. So Yes. And it's just that's a good uh helpful reminder because when the monkey's been on your back for a long time, you don't know the monkey is on your back. Mm -hmm. It's now become a part of you and your back. Yes? Right. And the more monkeys jump on that monkey. Yeah. And then there's a denial of those monkeys. And after a while, fucking, you're pretty fucking heavy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got a whole lot of monkeys. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how many people have called you? And they're very clear about 800 things that are bothering them, yet they're, they're in a giant shadow of an elephant that's not seemingly being noticed. Yeah. <laughs> it's just incredible. And then they want to go about and they have a whole list. I'm going to do this and get that done, that done. And there's this giant shadow of the elephant. And uh, all you want to do is point at the elephant. It's, you know, but whatever, you know. As that said, idea. You know, Mike, I had this, I had an H&I, which is like a commitment once a month to go to a place like a program. And I had one for about 11 years. And the partner that I went there was a woman named Lori. And she had been in every uh, program on this, in this facility. And now she had like a, 10 or 11 years sobriety. So, or actually earlier, because I did it with her for about 10 years. So she was she was great to have because she was the living proof, yeah, of that you could stay sober. And she would always talk about when she first went there and she was talking to a counselor and then they, she was thinking of going in there on her own volition, but she thought, she said, no, I got a job, I got a place, and I got a boyfriend, and I don't want to lose them by going into this meeting and she remember uh, going into this program, and she remembered the counselor saying, well, if you don't go into this program, you're going to lose them anyway. So she had to go back out and lose the job, the place, the boyfriend, and then she came in. Yeah, it's beautiful. I thought very inspiring every month. And then she went back out. And ended up dying. Yeah. She was, they found her naked in her apartment. No one had, she, at that point, no one was calling. Uh, yeah. So she was been in there for about four or five days and she had passed away. Something, you know, drank herself and overdosed on pills. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we have Emerson has his hand up. Hello, Emerson. How are you today? Good. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Hi, how are you doing, Paul? Um, my, well, it's, I guess his statement and a question, you know, I hear Paul talk a lot about the meaning that we give things. You know, we give everything as meaning. And I was watching this movie, Angels and Demons, about the Catholic Church, and they're picking up like this golden... Uh, chisel and hammer and they had gloves on and I, it hit me clearly like they have all of this me they give this tool all of this meaning but it's just a tool you know just because it's gold and they have it in a box with velvet and and so it really hit me how much attention and how much meaning I give to things that are meaningless. And so this weekend I put some stuff away that I used for, I guess, spirituality to, in my mind, like it gave my spirituality meaning. But I think for me, I, it's like traveling light or just kind of letting go of the weight of like some of these preconceived ideas that um, some of these things in my head that were so meaningful really don't carry they're not it's not real there's no meaning to them other than what i give it so um yes. that was my experience with traveling lighter this weekend 
you know, that statement comes from the Course of Miracles in a defined way. Usually you experience it. It doesn't tabulate. But in the Course of Miracles, they presented it very clearly as one of their fo foremost lessons, which was lesson two. And it just made a statement that you and I give everything all the meaning it has. So that's a perceptual fact from that book's knowledge. Yes. So, wow. And in AA, we say the results are going to be nil and let you let go of your old, your old ideas. Yes. So here, what is an idea? An idea is something that carries meaning. So now let's say you have 8,000 old ideas. Yeah, at any given moment. Some are lit up, some aren't lit up, some are dormant, but they're still there. What triggers all those old ideas is the idea that there's someone who has those old ideas. Yeah. Now, instead of going through the 8,000 old ideas, why not just look at the oldest idea, which is you having the old ideas? Yeah. That's the oldest idea is you having the old ideas. Why not go there? I mean, you want unless you're interested in going through every closet and drawer of an old idea, great. Maybe if you're a you know you're into an investigative or you have a club, you investigate no. shit, whatever. But if you really want to get to the bottom of it, just go to who has those old ideas because that's the biggest old idea that's going on. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> So, and this old idea, the self hides in this old idea. It hides in there and it talks to you as you. Yes, to give meaning to all the other old ideas it wants to walk around with because those old ideas sort of are the thread of the cocoon it keeps you in. Yeah, the old idea about this, the old idea about that. And an old idea obviously whistles a sense of past yeah and now as the course to miracles always says most of the time we see only the past yeah because we're looking through this cocoon like old ideas that we're wrapped in as an old idea called me and uh this is the bondage of self the bondage of self is usually about yesterday and tomorrow now yeah so you're in a bondage now, but it's not predicated on now. It's pred predicated on past and future. So if it is, there's so much relief from that bondage because the past and future isn't happening now. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. So if a lot of the bondage is predicated on the past and future, and I'm actually not in the past and future, hallelujah, there's a huge, there's a huge opening there. Yes? So... But what is it that's completely interested in the past and the future is idea of self because self plays God in the past and future. Yeah. It has a difficult time playing God now because there's already a God here. <laughs> right. right. But in the past and in future, it can play God all fucking day. It just goes there and tells you what happened. And have you ever had an idea something happened and you've been living on it and forming people of it for years. This is I did. I thought my father died when I was 11. Yes. For, for years, 11 years old, my grandmother and father died. Then I visited my older sister, who was more conscious than I was when we were young. She was 12 and I was nine. And she said, no, you were nine when they passed away. So here's this idea that I carried around with me with a story, oh, I was 11 years old. I wasn't even that, I was nine years old. <laughs> yeah, so most of this shit is made up. Yeah, so, and what is some, what, if there, if there was the past and there will be a future, and yet self claims the past and future and makes up its own fucking story, really, what are you living as? Are you living as a self or are you living as now? Yeah. Well, it's a good thing to tell the truth about because if you're living as self and you're constantly working to get out of it or improve it or transcend it or authenticate it, that's the bondage of self. Self can't get out of self. Yeah. 
Have you ever th thought of the idea, well, if I can't get out of it, maybe I'm not in it. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Maybe you're not right. in it. Yes. Right. Yeah. Why not? You've tried so many methodologies. In this Zoom, I just look at a few of the squares. There would be like pages of footnotes about what all these amazing things we've done to try to get out of self or improve self. And here we are at 1030 on Tuesday morning. <laughs> Most of it doesn't work. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So yeah, that's good, bro. But I always like to give credit where it's due, and it's the course of miracles. The course of miracles <laughs> defined that for me. It defined it, so I can walk around with that sentence in my pocket. Yeah, it's been engraved. But I saw it when I was. I heard it when I heard that lesson. I followed it, and when I looked at a, a chair, before I saw it as a chair, all I saw was seeing. <laughs> there was just awareness, and then there was then suddenly there was some awareness of something, and then the name was given it a chair. What? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank so you. If you hear, if you hear yeah. something, see if it verifies itself. Entertain it a little. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. The truth will tell you it's true. It will, if you entertain it with a little interest and willingness. Yes, it will. What is the bondage of self? Do you think you're tying yourself up all day? Do you think you're your own worst enemy? Do you think you hate yourself? I know people who think they hate themselves. They do not hate themselves. There isn't right. a, there, you isn't hating you. Something is hating you, but it is foreign to you. Yeah? Yep. I'm my own worst enemy. Can you imagine waking up every day and that's the starting point? Fuck. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. The bars couldn't open up early enough for that. Yeah. I'm my own worst enemy, and I got 24 hours to live it. Wow, I'm really excited. <laughs> Make that a double coffee, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to leave the house. What the hell? <laughs> don't you see how it cripples you through thought? It cripples you, and it makes you dependent on it. Yeah. It's so funny that you believe, we can believe that these are private thoughts when so many people share them. It just blows right. my mind. Right. I mean, what kills you is the terminal uniqueness of the disease that's a very common thing. It has a certain, it doesn't have infinite traits. Many of us who are driven by it end up in institution jails and death. It doesn't take you, it just, you can basically, if you see someone and you know they're a real alcoholic, a real one, like cross the line, you don't have to listen to them for more than a minute. You can forecast the rest of their life. They're going to be fucked. If it's not true. <laughs> it is. Right, right. You even know their last name. You know, it's like when you go to see one of those people, they say, give me something that's important to you. You don't even need that. As the fortune teller, you just, they're fucked already. And then you just say, yeah, you're going to be fucked. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how many people have you met under the influence of alcoholism? And then let's say 800 people. How many people have you met? Not many. You mostly met alcoholism, didn't you? There wasn't much difference between Fred, the alcoholic, Bill, the alcoholic, Ted, the alcoholic, Wilma, the alcoholic, Louise, the alcoholic. <laughs> Basically, I didn't meet Louise and Ted or Bill. I met alcoholism. It was talking to me as it. Yeah. I don't need a, this is good. We need to sit down and I have to learn about you for five hours. It takes like a minute, <laughs> two minutes. If they're a real addict, real alcoholic, you can give a pretty confident diagnosis. You're fucked. 
Yeah, that's it. They could be wearing Gucci shoes or no shoes. It doesn't matter. You're fucked with the Gucci, Gucci shoes on and you're fucked with no shoes. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. Actually, the money may be a disservice because then you'll be you'll attract a lot more enabling and it can go on and on. But it can't go on and on and on and on. <laughs> so I like the idea humbly that it's foreign to us. Because if it is foreign to us, we can be free from it. And that's a fundamental possibility that you will not allow it to steal anymore. Yeah. You're not going to allow it to tell you you hate yourself. You're not going to be cast as the worst enemy. You're not. You're going to have a very clear recognition that I'm not that. And then a lot of its little fucking impossibilities that can start appearing to be possible do not appear to be possible. Yes? And then a forgiveness creeps in based on all the guilt and shame that you feel for all the shit you did under the influence, almost like a wave. You don't even know it hits you. It's like a current, but there'll be a relief from all of that bondage through guilt and shame because you will realize you were not the doer of that fucking behavior. And if you don't believe you have, don't you have that ability what how much gratitude and honor do you express to that which you call the higher power based on its doing for you what you couldn't do for yourself didn't the disease do a lot of shit through you that you would never have done by yourself let's pin the truth to where the you know to to, to what's truthful what has defeated you is it you and your behavior or was it self's manifestations in your life? The big book itself says it's self's manifestations in your life is what has defeated you. Self is what has defeated you. That's what it says on page 64. And it says you need to be convinced of this. Yeah, well, maybe this way is one way we can hope to become convinced of it by sharing it every week. Yeah, yeah. Just pounding away at it, pounding away at it. I'm a real believer in repetition in time. I am. The head uses it all day. The head uses it all fucking day. So let's use it as an antidote to the head. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yes. It's more, this is such a gift, a privilege to share. Could you imagine if you could be a doorman to the room of relief? Fucking incredible. Hmm. Yeah. That you could stay at the door and get the joy of watching people get relief. Fucking unbelievable. What a, <clears throat> what a, gift, I, what a gift I've been given. I can sit at the door of Thank relief. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think Dana wants as her hand raised. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Emerson. Hi, Dana. How are you today? Come I'm on good. In. How are you? Doing well. Much better than I was a few days ago. I I got um, I wasn't paying any attention to my head, um, which I enjoy and have been very successful doing. I just when it starts to happen, I go, no, 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 we're not going there, and that works, and it. it it helps because of all the things you've taught me, Paul. And but I I got into it. I was I started my day. I wasn't even thinking about anything. And about three hours into it, I realized I was kind of depressed. And I thought, oh no, oh no, I've let it get to me. You realized, <laughs> you realized. Yeah. It told you you were depressed, yes? Yeah. 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 But why go there, honey? You're not there now, right? No, no. And, yeah, yeah, and I don't even know why I went there. Yeah, it I doesn't matter. It'll... You're not there now. That's what no. matters. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm not there now. See, this is the seemingly, see, the seemingly hopeless state in this example was three days ago. But you're not in that seemingly hopeless state. Yeah? Right. So fuck, fuck the story. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't. I, I haven't been. Go, I haven't gone there in the longest time. I yeah, mean, yeah. There you go. So don't worry. And you'll probably not go there for a long time. Yeah. And when you go there, you know that. So if yeah. you do this too shall pass, and you won't do any too fu anything too stupid. Great. Right. Right. Now have a whole new defense against it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. I was surprised by it. That's nice. I'm telling you, that means it hasn't been there for a while. No, it it's, hasn't. When you're totally taken over, you don't even know the monkey's on your back. So you're not right. surprised. You're surprised when it leaves. Now you're surprised when it shows up. Don't you see right. that as progress? Yeah, yeah. Don't you see that as progress? Yeah, now, I do. Yes, you're surprised when it comes back. Before, you would be surprised if it ever left. And those yeah. surprises are very rare. <laughs> yes, that's progress. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. <laughs> it I, took me I'm by surprise. surprise. I get so bummed out. Great. That means you haven't been bummed out in a while. Fantastic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is a nice, con nice little reminder. Yeah. 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 That's very nice. Yes. <laughs> It keeps the humility on a nice level. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And gratitude. Can you imagine? Wow. You got a free sample of what it could be like, and it isn't, which is right. great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's fantastic. It gives you a nut. See, it, you're on a highway, and there's a whole lot more signs than you thought. And now you see, like, oh, this too shall pass. <laughs> little problems and little designs, these things. Now you're starting to pick up those signs instead of warning. <laughs> yeah. Expect delays. I hate that one on the construction. Expect delays. Expect, expect fucking failure. Ex this is what the head loves to have you in. <laughs> I'm expecting it to fuck up. <laughs> now you have all new signs. Have a nice day. Greet others as you would like to be greeted. Yeah. <laughs> you are going to be what you're available to. Yes. So. Yeah. Yes. 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 If you're available to something that says you're not available to anything else, <laughs> check that out. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Yes, exactly. That's a good sign to get to vamoose, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great, honey. I'm happy. To, I'm happy you're here and things have gotten uh, clearer to you. And and once again, you've expressed even more clarity, which is great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. I, I'm surprised I could get angry. That's great. That means you haven't been angry for a while. That's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you see how we give everything all the meaning it has? Yeah. Getting angry may be a great, a great bit of value because you see that you aren't getting angry much at all. Right, right potentialities there but it's not happening so something must be mining you uh for a different shit than the head used to mine you for yeah we're under yeah, a we're, we're under a a spacious force so to speak yes yeah and we are faith truly that's what we represent and faith can be moved and when faith is moved and put into something, the faith is going to manifest by what it's put in. The spirit puts us into a situation that brings about a lot of ease and comfort, a lot of satisfaction and contentment, the ability to enjoy peace of mind, to be considerate somewhat of others, and to recognize other people's positions, not just from our own position. All this stuff happens. Yeah all because something else is directing the faith that we represent. 
before the head got our faith. And look what happened. Faith in the thought system had us petrified of the moment by believing we were living a past or a future moment. Yeah, it's slavery, yeah. complete slavery. You're going to be enslaved, Enspla enslaved to the spirit or enslaved to the head. Yeah, but something's going to drive you. Some force is going to drive you. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel that. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, it's like it says, we've been feeling like we've been driven and some story has told us we've been the driver. But basically, you feel like you're driven. Because you are. <laughs> That's <laughs> the way it is. You're driven. And it's important what is driving you. And in AA, they put just two possibilities. Either the faith is in the finite self or the faith is in the infinite. And where the faith lies is what's going to, is going to be your direction that you're driven. Yeah. 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 And so now... Feeling the direction that you've been driven, and let's say you have 100,000 miles of being driven by this benevolent juice, your, your perception of the upcoming curve on the road of life is going to be different. You're not going to think you're going to fall off the fucking cliff, are you? Right, right. Because you've got 100,000 miles under this GPS, and it's done pretty damn good, <laughs> and you have it punched into scenic. So you're seeing incredible, nice things. And when you see that curve, you're expecting another miracle, not fucking catastrophe, aren't you? Right. Yeah, there you go. Right. Before you get there, something is driving you. And before you get there, the meaning that's being given to that which you're going to get to is coming from what's driving you. Yeah. So yeah. the real fear is truly a state of mental anxiety. Right. And you believe there's fear around the next corner, but you don't know. But the mental anxiety of having faith in that fucking fear of the, around the next corner is producing the effect of fear now in you. Yeah. 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 And thank God I don't have, I don't have fear anymore. Not yeah, in can... any large quantity. I feel pretty fearless. <laughs> Great. Exactly. So, yeah. And now you're connected like blue is blue. I'm fearless. Yeah. And I take the curve a lot different than I'm super fucking afraid. Yeah. Yes. This is how this is traveling lighter through a life. Yeah. Yeah. Have a lighter, not by what's coming after, but what's before. And what's before right. is going to give the meaning of what's coming after. So when you see that curve that's coming after, your head from this fear position is giving it a, a fucking fearful meaning. Right. So the, the act of traveling lighter isn't the places or the mileage you do. It's how you travel to the places yeah. and the that's yeah. the traveling lighter. Yes? Yeah. And I feel and how, that. How you dra travel is not based on the curve that's coming up. Right. It's definitely not. Yeah. It's based on what's driving you right now. And right. many of us are being driven by what we call a spirit or a higher power. And some of us have been driven by it for 30 fucking five years. Yes. And there's a great reliance and faith in that power. So I don't even look that far. Right, <laughs> right. If I hit a curve, I know what to do. But I'm not, <laughs> I'm not imagining a curve right now. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'm not imagining much right now. I'm not. <laughs> it's, really, it's really pleasant to stay in the day I'm in. Yes, of course. Especially because you can't be anywhere else. <laughs> right, just, right. Yes, yes. I mean, what is truly, what does a acceptance demand of you? Nothing. Acceptance does not demand anything of you. Yeah. It's recognizing what's actually happening <laughs> right now. Right. It's the easiest freaking thing to do. 
It's the non-acceptance that is, is all the work. Constant working to, I don't want this person to be here that's here, or I want someone who's not here to be here. It doesn't work. <laughs> acceptance is you just see things as they are right now. Yeah. yeah. And you end, there. It's everything is interpreted. Everything. Everything is interpreted. Yeah. I don't want to get into the mystics of it, but yeah, what you're seeing here right now isn't even what's being seen here right now. <laughs> it's a meaning that's being given to it. Yeah. Now, our interpretation has a new ghostwriter. And man, this, this the story of Paul has gone a lot better as soon as I surrendered to the new ghostwriter. <laughs> it, it turned from a Stephen King novel to something else. I like to read a Stephen King novel. Uh, novel. I don't want to live a Stephen King novel. Yeah. I'd rather read it, but I don't want to live it. Yeah. Yeah, I like him. <laughs> yeah, I like horror, but I don't want. I've had enough of it in my own life. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you, Dana. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I'm happy about. Uh, yeah, you're in a groove. That's nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Anyone else, Mike? No, we have no other hands up. Thank you very much, Dana. Appreciate that. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Or would like to come in for a comment, small comment? Oh, hi, Nina. Hi, Bob. Nina. I just wanted to say I, I really appreciated that story about um, you thought your dad died when you were a certain age and then your sister remembered a different age. And um, I feel like that kind of sums up everything <laughs> that um, how I how I think I know what's happening is um, usually just just what just my interpretation and I never it's never reliable in terms of the truth it's just a really helpful um story yes. yeah yeah and don't you don't have to do anything about it just tell the truth and yeah start there and if the truth wants you to do something about it then you do but first just see it and just tell the truth about it yeah It's not as it doesn't it's not really complex. In the book, it doesn't say there's only one employer. It says there's an there was an old employer and a new employer. Yeah. So in the perhaps there's a better way. There's trusting the infinite or trusting finite. So they, they make it it's a black and white picture to get so that we can get uh to see it clearly yeah it's either this way it's either your way or the highway or this or that yeah or as jesus said supposedly you can't serve two masters at the same time so they present it that way with the hopes that by telling the truth about what it looked like trusting the finite self is going to lead you to be taken up into the faith in the infinite yeah and uh that's basically uh, the faith we have in the program. If you tell the truth of what it's like to be really as you, an active alcoholic, tell the truth about that and then see where that takes you. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. So you're going to be used and you, to employ means to use. So you have, you had an old employer so something was using you. Let's call it the trusting finite self stage. And now you're in a new, you have a new employer and you're in another stage, trusting the infinite stage. Yes. And yet there's two different stages, but the, the, the primary force is the same trust. Yeah. There's trust in the finite self or trust in the infinite. There's another for, word for faith. Yeah. So we represent faith. So if what we represent as faith is in the finite self, we've seen where it can go. 
Yeah. It can go fucking pretty far into a, you know, incomprehensible, demoralized, pitiful condition. That was faith. Yes. Yes. Faith was what allowed that to be brought about. Yeah. Now, if we can tell the truth about what had been relied upon as being completely unreliable, and with the help of this program or whatever thing, whatever help you're getting in where you are, that faith will be moved from self into the infinite. And this is why we need warnings, because self will try to say it's moving the faith to the infinite and it's just it's just putting it into the finite yeah so when someone says they have no faith that's faith so you have to realize the mental states move is wherever you go it says you're it's the one that went there so when you're saying i'm practicing every day putting faith in the infinite you're actually having faith in finite self what? Yeah. These things need to be noticed. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're going to get caught in that, that. It's almost like a fucking current of self trying to get out of self. You'll get cut. You'll get caught in there. Oh, and I've then, been caught. I've been caught. I'm just saying the pointer, that pointer of that was, is our yes, yes. Well, I'm not, I've, I've left speaking with you. I just went off. So everything we have, uh, every question, I just take off and it's not directed at any person. It's just to represent the principle of that, yeah? Where you're going to be driven. You're going to be employed. It says it all through the book. Now, if you, if you can be driven, you're not the driver, yes? So... You're either, let's say, driven by self or driven by spirit, but you're going to be driven. Yeah. Now, self wants you to think it's your thing called another self and self drives self. But spirit, let's just keep ourselves almost like a question mark and find out what we are. Yeah. You may be surprised. <laughs> you may come to new different conclusions than the one you were put in before. Because you were put in the idea of self. You were. You were put in there. So, all right. Thanks, Nina. Thanks, everyone. Oh, Lisa from... Uh, Thank you, Nina. Hampshire. Yeah, we have Lisa W. Hello. Hey, guys. Hey, Paul. Thank you so much for all your wisdom. I have a question. You, I've heard you talk about the um, self as a parasite. Uh, yes. Could you just expand on that a little bit? Well, I just like to see it as I'd like, I try to use words that evoke a foreignness to it, because the whole point is to see what's talking to you as you is not you. So, but I like the word parasite because it describes uh, what it was like to be under the influence. It seemed like I was being used for transportation and I was being driven to someone else's agenda, <laughs> not mine. And I would call it this this parasitical movement, but it's more for imagery because communication, I think, is best with imagery, and my, the the communication we're attempting to convey is the foreignness of what has defeated us. So I think a parasitical movement, demonic possession, these things allow you to image something other than you. And any little break from the identification as is a big move for me, for others. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why I use it. It's a parasitical movement because that's how it felt. It felt like something had to convince the host that it was the host because being occupied by the parasite, it's quite hostile. Yes. It doesn't live the host in that good of a condition. <laughs> so right. the parasite has to have an incredible strategy to convince the host not to move away from the parasite. And so it convinces, 
like yeah, a monkey it, on your it, back that's sucking your blood out of your body or something. Like, and like when you, when, you when you see the monkey, you call it you. Yeah, that would be the act of being identified as the monkey. That's what we're implying here. That the head that we rely on is in the act of being identified as the monkey. Yeah. And when there's faith in the head being in the act of being identified as the monkey, we live a life out as if we're a monkey. Yes. And there's a, other possibilities. Not for the monkey. There's other possibilities that's not for the monkey or as a monkey. You can see, yes, because the, what the head does is now, all right, now the monkey starts entertaining other possibilities. No, I believe there's another possibility other than the monkey. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm interested in that. What the monkey's interested in as other possibilities, I'm not interested in. I'm interested in the possibility I'm not the monkey. Interests me, yes. <laughs> that's what worked the, the monkey will love to entertain other possibilities always galvanizing the idea it's the monkey entertaining them yeah I want to question the monkey thing yeah yeah. I, there's been great results that's why yeah and if you're not certain about the results I am so I can come here and I'll sit with it I'll sit in the certainty of the results that I'm not the monkey <laughs> and share about what? The monkey. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. It claims of it claims to be the hero of a lot of shares. Well, we're gonna share about the monkey itself. I'm not that. What? Yeah. I mean, how limiting is it to try to perform everything as a monkey when maybe you could drop the monkey and see how you perform? Yeah? I don't know. It's worked with me, so here you are. Here you are, here I am. We're sharing. <laughs> uh. What else would you do? What else would you do but share the good news? I don't see, yeah. I like the image of the parasites, you know, with the addiction being like the monkey or being like the parasite. It's draining the individual. It's sucking the life out of them. Yes, and for sure. It's such a good it's an analogy for me and the visualization for me to really understand. I really appreciate that. Great, yeah. And the thing is, see, the parasite doesn't have a life, so it sucks the life out of you, yes. That's what it does, basically. If you're going to try to make, you know, in a service animal, I would warn against that. Not going to work. Yeah? Because it's a par it has a parasitical nature. Yeah, it's not it your friend. No, it's not a 50-50. It's either it for it to win, you lose. That's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know people say well it's part of me okay but it thinks it's all of you <laughs> so all right if <laughs> so go ahead thinking it's part of you but it thinks it's all of you <laughs> that's the point yeah yeah <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh. You'll know the relief from the bondage of self. It's, yeah. You don't know how much relief is connected to the relief from the bondage of self. It's a huge amount of relief, a huge amount of relief. I would say it's the mother load of relief here, truly. Yeah. Mm. You know, there's something that makes everything heavy. And therefore, you're driven to try to make everything light, which is heavy. Yeah. If you if you see that if you see you're not that something that makes everything heavy, you may see see things in a different light. Yeah. It may be they may 
obstructions may not be obstructions. Failures may not be failures. Yeah, they may have a great value, everything that comes to pass. Yeah, just need to trigger the eyes that can see this shit. Yeah, your eyes, these old eyes, seen through by self, are quite limited. You've probably played out every hand it can play out. Yeah, it only has a cup, 52 cards in its deck. We've gone over them, over them, over them, over them. The same old, same old. It's, it's not going to, it's, you're not going to get 50 new cards. You can get 50 new cards that are going to look just like the old cards. <laughs> it's the same fucking hand you play. Yeah. I mean, it's a boring game, literally. So. All right, thank you. I got to get going, I think. All right, thank you, Lisa. I have, some, I have some idea I'm supposed to be going somewhere today. I haven't figured that out yet, though. All right. Thank you, right. Paul. Thank you. Hey, Lisa, yeah, thank, thank you. So yeah, it's oh, great yeah. to hear you. So glad to join right. you today. Great, thank you. Yeah, Michael Stacy, as always. Hey, Mike, are you going to be here later? Yes, I will. Yeah. Uh, I, the question is, am I going to be here later? <laughs> well, we'll, see. we'll act as if it's going to be so. Okay. All right. We, we got Beans, B E E N S. Nice to see you, okay. Beans. I hope I said it right. Yeah. All right. Nina, as always. Yes. Axel. Hank. Hank Kelderman, Martin, Tom in Denver, Dana, Joseph, France, John K, Terry in Maine. I you're still in Maine, Terry? Oh, great. Is is is, is spring coming soon? I hope. No. no it's right I'm around the corner. Yet. <laughs> yeah, right around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Walter in the Netherlands. Monique. Oh, Monique made, an old friend of mine made a nice uh, a guest appearance. Hey, Monique. All's well. Pass the grace of the Zoom to, and the loving presence to your mom. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There she is. There you are. Hey, honey. Yep. Nice to see the two most lovely women in Alberta, Canada. There they are. Nice <laughs> to see you. Bye-bye. Mickey, as always. Roman Mueller. Kathy L. Sean in Minnesota somewhere. Dennis, Andrew, Christine in Kona. Fletch. Uh, Dhruv. Uh, ben, Oliver, Berlin, Jeff P., a phone number, I don't know. I got Andrew, I think, everyone. Hey, thank you so much. Pleasure. I had a really nice meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Mike, for Great. holding the space and everything. And see you guys soon, I hope. Thanks, Paul. Bye, Paul. Thank you. Bye.